let's just start by really getting in there and saying this is a topic that should be on everybody's lips right now. I'm sure if everybody hasn't been thinking about it, um, sorry, talking about it, they've been thinking about it. So we're going to be talking about offense, we're going to be talking about gossip, we're going to be talking about division. And Stacy, this is my friend Pastor Stacy, by the way. Let me start with introductions. Because, Hi, world. Yeah. <laughs> I assume you all know her, but for those of you that don't, Stacy is one of the most incredible pastors on our team here at Awaken Church. She is a wealth of knowledge. I call her the female Solomon. <laughs> and that's why I couldn't be more excited than to have Stacy as my first guest on Cherish Conversations. But Stace, yes. let's keep it real. Let's just keep it honest and organic this morning. I want to talk about the spirit of offense because we were we were talking about, you know, gossip and division, but but these two those two spirits all have a starting place. Yeah. And I found it's an offended heart. Okay. And in and in my Bible reading time, I've been reading through the book of Matthew, and in Matthew 24, Jesus shows us what's going to happen in the last days. And you're asking, are we in the last days? I would say to you, well, if we're not in the last days, they're at least laster than last time. <laughs> so this is what Jesus said. He said, um, and then many will be offended in the last days. They will betray one another and will hate one mm. another. Are we not seeing this? Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, you're hearing this, America, the love of yeah. many will grow cold. Now, this is Matthew 24 verse 9 on to about verse 12. So we're seeing that right now and we're seeing that progression. So Jesus talks about the progression that an offended person takes. Mm -hmm. They go from offense to betrayal or unfaithfulness. Then it it morphs into hatred. And then we see that they're then open to deception. False yeah. teachers are arising. So let's talk to our girlfriends and guy friends that are sneaking on today about the spirit of offense because we live in an offensive world. And there's no way we can avoid being offended. L let me ask you this question. Where do you think offense starts? Well, being, you know, coming from an Italian Jewish family originally, <laughs> I'm quite up close and personal to offense. Right. We're big, loud, and You boisterous. guys know how to fight. Yeah. So, you, you know, I've been a part of, of fighting. And so for the years I've learned to, to fight well or at least fight better. Right. Um, but I would say offense for me really starts off of sound bites. Right. Um, it's, it's a small thing. It's a little snag or it tends to be a disagreement, right. something that happens that, you know what? I don't know if I'm on board with that. Yes. And so we think sometimes an offense starts from a huge trauma right. or the big right. fight, but it yeah. doesn't. I found that offenses and the spirit of offense starts with the little things. Yes. You know, like the Bible talks about the little foxes. It's the mm -hmm. little things. And so generally that could be one soundbite. We're listening to, I mean, we've seen it even today. We're listening to a message. Message. I don't like that one thing that that pastor said. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's throw out the pastor. Oh, they throw the whole thing out. They're throwing <laughs> out the church. They're throwing out the pastor. They're throwing out everybody associated with the pastor. They're throwing out Jesus himself sometimes. Yes. So yeah. I think we've got to get back to the heart of the matter. And yes. what is the fruit of the life of the person? What is the fruit of the life of, of, of the people that we are listening to? And can we isolate the soundbite? Yes. Can we actually look at a bigger picture so yeah. I think that when offense is beginning, it's the one little thing that I didn't agree with. Right. The one thing that rubbed me the wrong way. And oftentimes that will progress into a whole offense when those little sound bites aren't dealt with appropriately. Yeah. You know what? I've, I've always said this, that most relationships don't end because of one big cataclysmic offense. It's just a whole pile of little ones that weren't dealt with rightly. So how do we live in an offensive world? Because we're going to get offended. And Jesus yeah. even said, woe to the world because of offenses. Yeah. Because offenses must come. And I believe that offense is actually a really great way to sort out the men from the boys, the girls from the women. Yeah. And and it's an indicator of your level of maturity as a Christian as to how you deal with it. Because we all kind of avoid being offended. I've been offended. You've yeah. been offended. So tell me, how do we live in a world that is offensive? I think we have to go back to the basics. I think we have to talk about the non-sexy things like faithfulness. <laughs> that is <isn't laughs> um, sexy. Um, you know, not running from the offense right. or the, the soundbite. You know, I think we've got to learn, like you said, how to be mature people and actually confront the things that we are dealing with. Like you said, 
we live in a world I oh my gosh get can get offended left right and center yeah. none of us are immune to it but I think one thing that we've got to do is we've got to learn how to build a little bit of resilience yes. in our life right um, first of all and like we talked about you've got to be able to deduce what is the heart of the matter yeah. I think we don't sometimes take a step back mm. to go what is the actual issue yeah. that I am offended with and I say issue because mm. most of us want to make it the person yeah wow we want to make it the person it's that person's fault and what they said and how she is and how he and we can go to all those things and the bible yeah. says not to fight against flesh and blood but by the powers but oh my goodness i think we fight against flesh and blood more times than not well we're seeing that reverberate around the world right now offenses some of them very very legitimate but what we're seeing instead of dealing with the isolated issue, there's a whole lot of residual stuff and reverberations happening yeah. around and about and people are being attacked. So if I can maybe give, you know, an example in my own life, you know, as I was thinking about this offense, just had to think of the many, many times I've been <laughs> offended that I could choose from. Right. Um, but I remember one in particular um, that really rocked me the wrong way. And it was, you know, when I just started a new job and this is years ago and um, had somebody that was working with me that at the very beginning I felt was a little off. I didn't feel like they were on target. I didn't feel like they were on board with the vision. I didn't feel like the tr they had the true heart of the leaders that I was surrounded with. But I was the new kid on the block. Yes. Wow. So my voice was not yet invited to the table, and with good reason. I think mm. nowadays we want our voices heard before there's any character or substance behind it. Wow. Listen wow. to me. Let thought. me tell you what I think. Yeah. And yet I haven't built yeah. any credibility. Right. And I think sometimes in the world we've forgotten that actually we do need to build character. We yes. do need to build credibility yeah. so that we're respected, so that our voice is then invited to the table. Right. But this was the early days for me. and my So voice, you had no voice. You weren't able to verbalize your complaint or you didn't feel like it was the right time and place. Exactly. Or season. I felt like if I came out with what I thought about this particular person, what I felt, whether it was right or wrong, mm. I would have been tossed out because my voice was not yet invited. So so you would have looked like a bit of a gossip, a divider, how, you know, like you're trying to stir the pot and bring division. Yeah, like, who are you? This yeah. person has been, been here for years. So you years. had to be patient. And do you know how hard that is? It's hard. Well, well, that's a lot of us, we don't like to be patient. We feel it. We want to say it. And we that, think it. We want to verbalize it. And I just remember it took everything within me to go, you know what, I'm not gonna do that because the end result is not gonna be the one that I want. Wow. It's not gonna bear good fruit at this point. Yes. Even though I felt in my heart, I was right. Yeah. I felt like I had the right um, perspective, um, but it wasn't the right timing. So I had to hold true. So what did you do? Yeah. Because you can't, I mean, you're living with this, this offense over something that's happening. You don't feel like you can verbalize it to your boss, to, to men, to yeah. leadership. How, what do you do? So I did a couple things. Um, one of the big things was I had to sit before God himself and go, what is, what are the issues that I'm having problems with? And mm. let me pray about those. Right. So not let me just pray about that person would be afflicted and leave. Yes. But no, I remember holding to the truth of God and going and praying my heart out yeah. in my own room where nobody was seeing me and crying out to God and praying and going, God, I pray. I remember the prayer that I prayed. God, I pray that truth would be shouted in the streets. Wow. I pray that truth wow. would be the thing that comes forward, that people's eyes would be open to see, oh God. Wow. And so I remember just praying that. And that was one, it's one outlet. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good outlet to get with God and not a thousand people. Wow. Because wow. the bent is, I want to talk. And don't think I didn't want to. I yeah. wanted to talk to everyone. Yes. And be like, hey, what do you think about? Don't you agree that? Aren't you seeing that? But again, like you said, I would look like yeah, a gossip. gossip. 100%. That's what I would, I would have thought. <clears throat> and so instead... Oh, gossipy Stace. <laughs> Here she goes again. And so instead, I, I went to God and then I went to a few trusted people. That's key because sometimes we do need to process. Yes. And yeah, we process with the Lord through prayer. And surprisingly, my friends, prayer does work. It's a very valid, absolute, yes. necessary option and necessity. But 
Who, who would you tell people that they should unload to? We all need to vent to somebody. I think the whole thing of just keep it between you and the Lord, while you know that works in some cases, there are other times you actually need to verbalize it. You need to be able to debrief and process with somebody. Yeah, and I would say first ask God to reveal to you who is that person. Right. It's not the same one every time. Okay. And so for me in those situations, I would pray and God, God highlight to me the ones that I meant to speak with about, about this. Um, I believe it's a Christian. Yeah. I needed wisdom from someone that was beyond my years. And it doesn't even mean that it needs to be someone that's in the thick of it. Wow. I actually found there's good, wonderful, solid Christians that don't need to know the details. Wow. They don't need to know the whole story. They need to know the heart of the matter. Yes. To then speak into the heart of the matter. Right. Because sometimes if you go to the ones that are all close to you, your BFFs, though they're Christians, though they're great leaders, they can get involved in those details. Well, what did she and how did she? Mm. But that's not what matters in real offense. Wow. Please tell us what matters in real offense. <laughs> what really matters in, in the true offense is the heart of the issue. Is the situation that's happening, is it in accordance with the word of God or is it not? So that we know how to pray. Wow. And so I instead wanted to pray that the false things or the things I was saying, that those things would come down and I could see, have someone that could stand with me on those things. So I'm not standing with another person to tear another person down. Wow. I'm standing with someone so that truth, so that love, so that the purposes of God can and actually come about. And reconciliation. And I think yes. one of the, there's, that's one of the things that gets lost when we get in the battle of fighting one another because we're offended. Yeah. Is, is reconciliation. And the gospel, the essence of the gospel is reconciliation. Yes. And we think to ourselves, well, my relationship with God is solid. And yet I just can't reconcile that when I read the scriptures because the Bible says they will know, being mankind, yeah. that you are my disciples, this is Jesus speaking, yeah. by the way you treat and love one another. Yeah. So don't tell me you love God, but you hate the church. Don't tell me you love God, but you hate your brother and you're happy not being reconciled to that person whom you're offended with. And it's really concerning, I think, when people and you know, you hear it all the time. They're talking about a particular, you know, leader in the church. I don't know, and it's maybe a little off topic, but I've just heard so much, I'm going to be honest, of this leader should do that, and this leader should do that, and there's so much judgment being thrown out there. I'm like, social media has elevated everybody's opinion to the nth degree. Yes. We all now have a pulpit. We all now have a platform. We all now have an audience and influence thanks to social media. So opinion is like oh, you're bombarded with it constantly. And I would say we've got to feed on the things that are going to help us and not hurt us. Right. So instead what we're doing is we're tearing people apart on all kinds of, of forums now. Yeah. Instead of feeding ourselves on the things that's going to bring resolve, right. on the thing that's going to bring reconciliation. So we talk all day long or we're writing all day long on how this person and what they did how about we research how to get health and faith and, and healing right? and concentrate on the thing, like the Bible says, concentrate on the things that are good yes. and right, not on, on the bad, yes. you know? So right. if we begin to concentrate on the good things, we're going to find more good things, yes. you know? Yes, 100%. So what, what advice would you give to somebody today who is dealing with offended people coming to them? And I find that there yeah. are people That's in every church, every family, and they seem to be like the mothership or the person to whom everybody speaks. Uh, how, and let's say somebody comes to them, they're having an offense and it's legitimate. Yeah. And I, I just wanna to say today, there are very many yes. legitimate, hurtful, wounding things that happen in church, in family, in life in general. And not all our offenses are trite or insignificant. Yeah. A lot of them are very real. Yes. So if somebody comes to you with a real offense, genuine one, and you're finding yourself agreeing, what do you do? How do you, what do you do to, to not jump on that bandwagon and then it's a war against all men or it's a war against the church or it's a war against women? Yeah. What do you do to stay focused on reconciliation and godly resolve? I think the one thing that I would ask of the person bringing me the information, as well as especially if I agree, yeah. is what are we gonna do about it? Yeah. And why are you bringing this to me? Yeah. Um, because we have to get back to, okay, if we both disagree, let's say on whatever topic or matter, that begs the question, what do we do with this? See, most people wanna just seethe with it. 
Yeah. They want to find five other they people. They just want to vent. They just want to right. vent. Got it. And first off, we've got to be careful. Do we have a balance of people coming to us for the negative and the positive? Wow. So if you're a person who is constantly getting people's complaints and offenses, what questions should you be asking yourself? Do I have that negative spirit? Do wow. I have? You are attracting it. Because I'm attracting it. Hmm. I'm attracting it. We attract what and who we are. Uh-oh. And that is horribly vulnerable wow. and confronting. We need to analyze that statement. So we attract who we are. Now, that doesn't mean those are the one-offs right. that come to us and they are seeking wisdom sure. and they are seeking questions. And, and I love when those people come, but I will still ask the same question. What are we going to do about this? Do we want to move forward in this? Do we want to get healing past this? Yeah. And here's the big question. Is it preference or is it true biblical right. um, non-doctrine? Right. Like there's a big difference between someone that has just, you know, the, the, tr the word triggered is like everywhere right now. Yeah. I was yeah. triggered by this. Well, great. Follow the pain of, of pain. Where does that trigger lead you? Wow. What's the root of that issue? And then can that be something that we move through or we work past or we give to God and continue in our daily life? Yes. I've had many disagreements. And wow. I don't run from the place that God has put me in. Yeah, right. I've had plenty of times where I don't agree or I agree with, with someone. Yeah, that's rubbing me the wrong way. I agree with you. You know what? Let's do this. Let's pray. Let's release it. And let's see what God does. Let me ask you this question on offense because here's what I'm noticing. I'm noticing that if we don't agree on one thing, the relationship is severed or ended. Yes. That's what I'm seeing around and about. And I've got to be honest with you. I can't think of one friend that I agree with 100% on everything, yeah. including my husband. Imagine that. And yet I'm committed and yet I'm in love and yet I'm devoted. Yeah. But it seems to me now, and, and that's including my friends. I'll scroll through Instagram and I'm like, wow, okay, that's one way to live your life. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna toss them out. I'm not gonna toss the friendship out. I'm not gonna toss the God they serve out. I'm not gonna toss the church out. But we're seeing that happen over and over again. I disagree with this one thing you said or this one belief that you have, and now the relationship is over. You know what? To be honest, I've asked that very question to some of my friends. Okay. We have disagreed on certain things, and for me, that's okay. Mm. So we disagree, and we've got 99 other things that we have in common. So it's us focusing on the right things instead of the things that we disagree on. And I remember asking a friend, we completely disagreed on, you know, a, a situation and the way that it was handled. Right. She thought it was horrible. I thought it was fine. Okay. And I couldn't get on board. Right. She explained it to me 10 different ways. Yep. <laughs> Isn't that sure. what we try to do? Come yeah. on, girls, be honest. What if I sell we it have to you a... this way and I throw in <laughs> some steak knives? <laughs> then you'll come over to my Exactly. Side. So it's spoken to me that same thing in 10 different ways. After the 10 different ways, I didn't move my ground. I'm right. like, I can't get on board. I don't agree. I mean, I remember looking at my friend and saying, but can we still be friends? Wow. And do you know that for in one particular situation, that was actually hard for my friend? Wow. She didn't know if we could. Mm. You don't think like I think. Mm. You don't agree like I agree on this one thing. Now, mind you, tons of the things we did. We had fun. We loved hanging out with each other. We loved all of these things. It's just one particular thing that I'm not getting on board with. Right. And yeah. she, she struggled. And our relationship struggled yeah. for a season. And I remember calling back up and going, seriously, are you not going to be my friend because yeah. I don't agree with you? Wow. And, um, and what did she say? I need to hear this. Uh, was, like, is the relationship still? Solid? It's intact now. Yes. Okay. So um, I kind of didn't let it go easily because I just was like, you, I'm not going to let you toss out our many years, I assume, of relationship over one little thing. And yeah. you know what's funny is I think sometimes we don't fight right and we don't fight for the things that are right. Yeah. Instead of fighting about the issue, right. I wanted to fight for the relationship. Yes. Can you say that again, please? Instead of fighting for the issue, I wanted to fight for the relationship, meaning yes. the person is more important to me right. than a preference. Yeah. You prefer looking at it this way. I prefer looking at it that way. Right. But is our relationship important to move forward? Yes. Yes, it is to me. And she came to that conclusion as well. Right, right. You know what? 
And she, I remember her telling me time later that really rocked her. Wow. Can I be friends with someone that I want this person to agree with me and yet they didn't. She, now she came to the fact that she could lay it down and we became friends and we're still friends to this day. This was years ago. Um, and so, but I remember that as kind of a mental note, how easily relationships can break apart because we can't put a preference aside. Now, yeah. now, now the issue I was talking about was not that, you know, she wanted me to worship the devil. Mm. <laughs> like, so it wasn't like an earth shattering difference. Yeah. Right. It's like, you know, I was overlooked in this situation and yes. this is how they handle it. And I'm like, yes. yeah, well, you know right. what, they had a lot going on and you know, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. And so, um, that's the thing. So I think it's very different if we can learn how to decipher, um, preference, you know, and, and just put our preferences aside. Right. We act like we can all the time, but then we don't. We don't, and we're seeing it really played out around the nation right now. It's a nation divided because there are issues that we can't get agreement on. So now there's almost feels like civil war in our nation yeah. over this offense that has not been dealt with rightly. So let's talk a little bit more about how Jesus would have us handle these yeah. moments. Cause I know what it's like to be offended. I've absolutely been offended. And I remember one day, and I think there are some telltale signs to see if you're offended. Yeah. I think actually scrolling through Instagram is one. Can you like their photos? <laughs> Can you level up and comment on their photos? I think if you're scrolling through and you feel like a little bit of a twinge in your heart and your spirit, yeah. and you're like, I'm not liking that. I'm not liking the fact that they just got a new house. I'm not liking the fact that they just posted a selfie and they are looking H-O-T hot. <laughs> I, I want to challenge you. Do the very thing that the worst part of your soul is telling yeah. you not to do. And I find those, insta I feel like that helps me deal with that spirit of offense. But I remember scrolling through Instagram one day and I'd had a little bit of a thing with, with a, a particular person. And I saw the picture and I'm like, I'm not liking that. I was doing everything that I told you to not do before. And I felt the Lord say to me, Leanne, you're offended. Mm -hmm. And I was offended that he called me offended. I'm like, God, I am a pastor. I tell <laughs> others to not get offended. But the truth was, I was, I was offended. Yeah. And you know, I asked the most simple question to the Lord, well, God, what do I do? And I got the most beautifully simple answer. And often we toss out the simple things because I don't know, they're simple. And we feel like we're smarter than God yeah. sometimes. Yeah, that's true. And he said, Leanne, just read what my son said, read what Jesus said to do when you're offended. Pray for them. Yeah. Pray for them. He doesn't say to love people that love you because we do that automatically. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who have spitefully used you or wounded you or offended you or hurt you. And I found that the beautiful balm of forgiveness and reconciliation came when instead of ignoring her Instagram on social media and not liking it yeah. or avoiding her or stirring up gossip in and division in other people's hearts by sharing or repeating the offense, I started to pray for her yeah. and everything shifted. And I began to see her with eyes of compassion and reconciliation yeah. and love. So let's not discount the words of our Savior. In fact, they're the most powerful wor words if we want to live free from this burden of offense. And I believe it's, it burdens the world and it burdens us. It's a yeah. weight, isn't it? Being offended is a weight. Yes. It's an energy leak. And it, and, it, and it steals. Yeah. It steals our joy. It steals our peace. And that's one of the telling signs mm. is if I'm not at peace, if I'm not at joy, yeah, what's that's stealing right. it? Wow. So if you can't sleep, if you're anxious, if you're angry, if you're tormented, if you're constantly rehearsing offenses and what they did and what they said and who did what <laughs> to the people around you or even in yeah. your head, you are not in peace. No, instead what happens often is we're rehearsing the story. Yeah. And then we rehearse in our heads what we would say if they said. Oh, yeah. Been there, <laughs> done that. Right? Um, and so I remember just recently catching myself doing that. And I'm like, oh, dear God. Yeah. I've got to deal with this. And so dealing with it sometimes is talking to the person and walking yeah. through it. Other times, it's simply letting it go. 
Wow. I think too often nowadays, people have used like the one scripture like to go, go and... Go to your brother who's offended you. And if he does not listen, bring another person. Yes. And if he still doesn't, bring yet another person. Yes, let's read our word in the context of the entire Bible right. and not just the one verse. So while it's appropriate at times mm. to absolutely deal with and speak to the person I'm working through, I've actually found, to be very honest with you, I found that more often than not, I can release it yeah. to, to God it doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Yeah. And I think that's where we get hooked up. Yes. But then they go free. But then they're living in the fact that they were right, but I was right. Yes. Obviously. And that's a lack of faith. Yes. It's a lack of faith in God, isn't it? That in he God. can deal with it. Right. And so I went, you know what, God? You're a better judge than I am. Mm. You're you're better at this than I am. And mm -hmm. I don't want to live under this. Yeah. So instead, I remember putting on my makeup in the bathroom going, I released that person, God. Beautiful. I released that person. I and then did that. what you did at that point is then and then pray. pray and praying will turn your heart. Bless them. And, and, and bless yes. them. And it doesn't release people from being right or wrong. Let God be the judge. Let God be the judge. And the truth comes out in the end, doesn't it? You know what? Paul said this famous scripture. He said, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm, yeah. but the Lord will repay him according to his deeds. And so often we want to grab a hold of fence, yeah. compels us to grab a hold of vengeance. Yeah. When vengeance is something that no human was ever created to handle rightly, if you hold vengeance and we're seeing it again, playing out around the world, yeah. it will burn your hands and it will burn the people yeah. around you. Human, mankind, Human beings were not built or created to carry or hold yeah. offense. It is a toxic substance that can only be handled by the Lord himself. And it's something that we're actually meant to endure. Yes. Life isn't easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. What? It's not. And I was so, right there. What do you mean? I know. It paints the picture. The television life? No. Um, but it's just not that way. Actually, living a Christian life is enduring hardships. Yes. And it's hardships with people and with the issues that we face of the day. And so I think also don't beat yourself up if you've gone through a few of these. Oh, yeah. Just come out the other side. Come Learn on. from each one. Yes. Heal from each one instead of making it you know, a new fight every time. Just learn a little something from each one you've gone through. Yes. Release it to God. Begin to pray for people instead of trying to justly run after that thing that has, has offended you. Yeah, I, I so agree with that. I think we can do something about this. You know, the words of Jesus right here in the last days, many will be offended. Yeah. And so that's just a, a that's just a, a sobering reminder to us yeah. that this is a common thing. And like Pastor Stacy said, don't feel condemned. Let's just change our operating system of how we deal with this. Let's just make things better than they've been yeah. in the past as it relates to being offended. And I want to just end with this. You're worth more. You, you were created yeah. to enjoy and flourish in life and enjoy relationships. And what I've found is if you pick up a spirit of offense and don't deal with life's offensive moments rightly, you will be lonely. You will walk yourself out of every relationship, yeah. out of every friendship, out of every church that God plants you in, out of every marriage. Yeah. Sadly, offense is a huge yeah. destroyer of marriage relationships. Yeah. So we've got to learn to do this the Jesus way. So we're going to continue on this topic in the future. Yeah. But one final thought in our last minute together. If someone is really seething and harboring an offense in their heart and they feel, they feel wounded and they feel righteously wounded, like, no, this matters, this is a big deal, what would be the last thing that you would leave them with today so we can help them find freedom? I would say, I would say this. In the end of the day... Take whatever that issue, the person, the offense. Right. Release yourself. Yes. Release yourself from it. Bible says to cast your cares upon him for he so cares for you in Second Peter. Beautiful. God actually cares about what concerns you yeah. and what's been stealing the peace. So I would say just take that thing, give it over to God, invite wisdom in let go and let God Amen. so that you can live freely. And I would say with, with people as well, when we let go and we let God, remember, it's being let go to the rightful place. Right. To, to Jesus himself. Yes. And I think when we so do that, good, Stace. we get back to the basics. Does yes. that person love Jesus? 
Yeah. And love people, great. I'm going to still be friends with them. Yeah. I'm going to put my preference aside. I'm going to lay it low. Mm. And, and I'm going to and I'm going to let it go. Mm. So absolutely. That soul wound, that hurt, that pain. Yes. Number 1, release it to God. Get outside wisdom. Yes. And get back to the basics. Keep loving Jesus. Keep loving people. Don't uproot yourself. Go right. back to the things that helped you in the first place. Stay in church. Stay connected to friends. Stay in relationship with Read each this. other. Read, Read the word of God. <laughs> Do the basics. You'll never go wrong. Amen. You're going to that. live a happy life. And you will live a happy life. Yeah. And that's what we want for all of you. We want you to be happy. We want you to enjoy life. We want you to enjoy the relationships that God's given you. And that's going to be really the, the root of everything we talk about here because we want you to live free Yes. because you're worth it. God loves you and we love you. And we're going to see you next Thursday, 10.30 a.m. for another Cherished Conversation. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I love, love you. Love you, friend. Bye. Bye.